Hey, Lise. Hi there. <laughs> so, hello everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of Conversations Zingdad. And uh, today, Lisa and I are talking about opening your heart. Specifically, why you would want to open your heart. Um, now, for myself, I've come to the, uh, the awareness that there's... It's, it's, it's almost like this is a Rubicon moment. There's a, the, the, uh, 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 an, an, an event that happens in the uh, awakening of, of a soul. When, when, when that soul, while incarnated, realizes the value, the importance, and, and, and also how to open their heart consciously, to take conscious control of the, of the heart and to open it, and feels how that changes. It's like up until then, life is one way, and from there on out, life is another way. It's my experience. What do you think? Well, for sure, it was like that for me. Um, maybe I could just share, up until the age of 32, um, my heart was actually not at all open. Mm -hmm. It was completely closed. I didn't even know that my heart was closed. Um, but I certainly didn't feel things the way people reported feeling things. You know, I remember being at my grandmother's funeral, and I adored my grandmother. But, and I just felt so numb. I felt, I felt nothing. And I thought, is there something wrong with me? That I'm not able to feel the way other people are able to feel. And then at 32, I had uh, a very traumatic experience, um, which somehow led to the opening of my heart. And if you'd asked me then whether it's a good idea to open your heart, I would have said absolutely not. Because I felt so raw. I felt so... I didn't know what to do with all of these feelings and these emotions. And, um, I mean, I think you remember from back then, I was constantly in tears. Yes. From being somebody who never cried, yes. I was basically, for a year, I was constantly in tears. Because I didn't know what to do with these feelings, with these emotions, because I'd never experienced them before. So this is the first thing that I, um, that I want to say about heart opening and heart closing. Is... is Heart open is our natural state. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, you know, in our first incarnation or, or you know, when the soul is, is, is new to incarnation, I think our hearts are naturally wide open. And then what happens is we have shocking, painful, traumatic, horrendous experiences. You know, maybe in one lifetime you're tortured or you're burned at the stake or, you, you know, your heart is just broken and broken and broken. And it becomes so painful that you say, I don't want to feel and you're like a snail that retreats into its shell, except you lock your little door behind you. You're just like, that's it. I'm going to be in my shell for the rest of all eternity. Um, so that's the first thing, is when our hearts are closed, it's not closed because we're stupid, because we don't know any better. It's closed because we, we're protecting ourselves from this, let's be honest, cruel and painful world. So, so it starts open and then we close our hearts. And then we arrive in the awakening lifetime. And we something we are called to open the heart. So um, then there there are things that will open your heart, and then there's a, a, a process which is a for me it's a spiritual meditative process. It's becoming consciously aware that you can open your heart, that your heart is a is a portal that is can be under your control, and you can actually open your heart, and you can choose to open it. Then for me, there's a, there, there's, there's a next awareness is that there are layers of opening. Like you can open your outer heart, and that's what you were talking about. The outer heart for me is, is the emotional heart. And, and, and when we have too much pain, it's been too much to feel. I don't want to feel all this pain. Then the outer heart closes because I can't feel it. And when you start to open the outer heart, all of that pain becomes like comes up for feeling. Mm. And so then there's, there's often, there's like lots of tears, there's lots of uh, expression of that pain, because it has to, it's got to move through. So it's like we've got lifetimes of trauma, which we couldn't feel, and now it all catches up, and we feel it, and we feel it, and we feel it, and we catch up. Mm -hmm. Then you can open up inwards, um, and the middle chamber of the heart is, 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 is where feeling is knowing, where you are in contact with your truth. And then the innermost chamber of the heart is where you are connected with the divine. And so for me, the purpose of really consciously opening the heart is opening outside, middle, inwards, and having this energy flow through. And that, for me, that moment is, is like that's the next Rubicon with the heart. Because if you get there and your heart is completely open, you discover you are 
uh, you're a tube, not a vessel. And you're a tube, the you that you are. Because there's always this question, this philosophical question, like, who am I? No, who am I really? You know, and, and it's a question we never get to the, uh, the end of. Because there isn't anything to point to to say, that's me, when we really get to it. But what the, the me is, is a, is, a, is, a, is a tube. And it connects the divine, God, goddess, oneness, on the inside, with the world on the outside. And when that's open and we are channeling the divine light through ourselves, when that starts to happen, everything changes. Mm. So my experience, and I've been, I've been practicing with this, I've been trying it out the last little while. If I start my day and I consciously open my heart and I consciously bring the divine light through and shine it into the world, then I feel differently about myself. If I do that in the morning before I get up, before I go about my day, I feel differently about myself. And as I go about my day, I notice the world feels differently about me. Wherever I go, the world is friendlier, kinder, softer, gentler, more open to me, more welcoming to me. Things that would have been sticky or difficult become more easy, become more flowing, become more joyful. You know, even to the extent you've noticed this, because folks around, around here, I'm the, I'm the DIY guy. I'm the, you know, if uh, something breaks, it's, I, I fix it. Plumbing, electrics, everything. Now, if my heart is closed, then I've got a job to do. Uh, Lisa's a DIY assistant. Lisa's there. <laughs> so Lisa's handing spanners and things. If my heart is closed, then things go wrong. And I get very angry. And I struggle. And, you know, if, if a nut can strip, then it does. And then I've got, don't have the right stuff. And I've got to venture off into town to get the right things. And it's all just sticky and difficult. If my heart is open then whatever, like recently we were working on the geyser up, up on the roof. I'm up there and I'm happy to be there. It's a beautiful, joyful day and I'm having fun and I'm solving one problem after the other and there's flow and there's joy and I always come to the end of the job and I go, that was so much easier than I expected. Even nuts, bolts, spanners, hardware <laughs> responds differently to you if your heart is open. The whole world is different if your heart is open. Your body is healthy because your body needs to be a part of the vessel system that carries the light into the world. Your mind, your emotions, all of you, you need that. You're nourished with this light. The whole world is nourished by your light. The whole world changes. Events in the news, I promise you, events in the news change when my heart is open. That's my experience. What do you think? Hmm. Well, for me, when my heart is open, there's just um, the, this ability to be impacted by life. Oh. And so, uh, you know, one feels the pain and the, the sadness and the struggle of life, but equally you are able to feel the joy and the bliss and the pleasure and the, just the, the isness of being. And, and it, it's like when my heart was closed, this world was a very sterile place. And, and I would say it was sort of in black and white and hard edged. And with my heart open, the world is now suddenly in Technicolor. And it's, it's juicy and it's, it's interesting and it's joyful. Um, and, and yeah, very pleasurable. It's a pleasurable place to be in. Also messier and more chaotic. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would agree with that. Um, but for me, the, there's, there's no doubt that I would prefer to have my heart open because there's an intimacy with life. There's the ability to feel intimate. Yeah, you feel more vulnerable as well, but there's the ability to feel intimate with life and to be impacted and to just extract the juiciness of life. So that's why I would choose to have my heart open. And, and then also the ability to connect with, with others, to connect with, with the world, to connect with plants with animals and other human beings it's just really it's beautiful i like what you're saying uh you, you you add a different dimension i'm talking about you know this light that that shines through and how it impacts the world and you're talking about how you're letting the world in and how it mm. impacts you for me crucially the process of really opening my heart and connecting with the divine within and shining my divine light is that i i can no longer hide it from myself 
that the divine light is shining back at me from everywhere. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, whether it's looking at a sunset and seeing the goddess in nature, or whether, whether it's looking in the eyes of another and seeing the God in them, or wherever it is, you know, like I will be at a store and I'm passing, you know, passing through the cashier and I take a moment and I see this person. And it's almost like a little bit falling in love, just like, like a mm -hmm. tiny little bit. You see them, you oh, and, and everyone responds differently. And that's what I mean by being impacted by life. Yeah. I mean, to the extent that one can look at a beautiful fruit and just almost fall in love with it. It's yes. just like that, that connection with the beauty that is this piece of fruit or this, this music or this person or this sunset. Mm. So, yeah. And there's more. There's so much more. Uh, to me, you know, it's like when people, because recently I've had people asking me this because I've been teaching this. They've been saying, so, you know, what is the benefit of opening your heart? And, and I'm a little bit, how do you even answer? It's like, what is the benefit of loving? What's the benefit of breathing? What's the benefit of being alive? How do you explain something that is, permeates everything and changes everything? It's like, if your heart is open, I find for myself, I'm connected to, to a different kind of a truth, a different kind of a knowing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not navigating life with my ego, with, you know, the this toy box that's up here with all of the things that it knows and those just become tools that I can use. My, my heart connection is my compass. It is my path. It's my connection to the divine. It's, it, it's, it's all of that and so much more. It's also my path home. I find that I find I have a connection in my heart to the oneness, to the divine. And because I have this, I am clear, I'm secure, I'm safe. Because that's the only thing that's safe. Like, this body's going to die, you know? Like, like this world's going to fall apart. Uh, um, you know, there's no investment or insurance policy that actually ever gives you true peace, true security. You're, you're always like, oh, if I have this, then I'll feel a bit better. And, I, and, and you know, if I've got the right job and if I've got the right stuff, the right, then I'll feel safe. But those things never actually make you safe. That's true. Your connection to the divine, when you've got it, you know, well, that's forever. Mm. It's what I am. Mm. I'm secure. I'm, I'm, this is me. And that's your safe place to stand. And from here, I open my mouth. And what comes out of my mouth comes straight from my heart. I don't even have to think about it. I can just show up and shine. Because if I'm heart connected, my mouth is heart connected. And so my soul is heart connected. My body is heart connected. I'm safe. I am where I need to be. I'm on the path I need to be on. The benefits are multifarious and unending. <laughs> so folks, um, there's, uh, I've, I've just recently started, I've just recently launched a thing called um, Full Moon Gathering of the Tribe of Light. That was supposed to be, as of this moment, that was supposed to be last Sunday. Last Sunday, the heavens opened up and there was thunder and lightning and hail and rain and storming and it was just chaotic craziness. So um, we had to postpone. Uh, now, as I'm saying this, this is Friday, it's going to be on Sunday. Um, this video is going to go out today, so you're getting it on Friday. Um, if you want to be on this journey of opening your heart and you haven't already signed up for the Zing Dad's Gathering of the Tribe of Light. The heart of the gathering of the Tribe of Light is heart connection. I mean, we're going to be talking ancillary stuff. We're going to be talking about like how to love your body and how to connect with the divine and how to speak to your guides and I, all kinds of stuff. But it all starts and centers on the heart and the heart connection. Episode one on Sunday. Um, I am going to be talking more about how to open your heart, but I'm specifically going to be sharing with you a guided meditation that I do every morning so that you know, you'll be able to experience it and you'll be able to do it every morning that takes you on this journey of having an, 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 a, a constantly open heart. Please come along on this journey. You are cordially invited. It's going to be a life-changing journey. Any final thoughts from you? No, not really. <laughs> I'll see you on Sunday. Lisa will be joining us, so we'll, we'll, we'll all be there. Come and join us. Until next time, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.